Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the arena. You're probably here because you're wondering which of the current iPhone 13 line, including the all new SE third generation, will come ahead and be crowned battery drain king for the first half of 2022. We just recently looked at the brawl between the iPad lineup on pay-per-view just last week, and in that test, there were some disappointments. Click the card at the top right to watch the iPad showdown, including the all-new iPad Air 5th generation. But in today's video, we're looking at five devices who have been training hard, and it all culminates here for my official iPhone battery drain test showdown. Before we begin, go ahead and smash the like button for all the endless hours that I pour into these tests for you guys. And with that being said, let's get things started by rolling that intro. Tech enthusiasts from around the world, welcome to my official battery drain showdown on the current iPhone 13 line. This is the moment iPhone users and fans have been waiting for. Bringing you this content straight from the hottest tech channel on YouTube, the one and only is proud to test all five iPhones on a level playing field so that those on the fence on choosing which iPhone suits their needs the best at least have a better idea of how they can expect their new phone's battery to behave. If this is your first time viewing one of my drain tests, I want to welcome you and encourage you to view my past year's drain test for a more in-depth explanation of the rules. But for those returning viewers, I love you guys and I'm glad to have you back spectating this free-for-all. We've been over the rules before as they are pretty simple. Meticulous care and attention has been placed to ensure all five iPhones have the exact same settings. True Tone is turned off, all of them are on the same Wi-Fi network, they are all turned to 65% brightness, do not disturb on, yada yada yada. I think you guys are used to the rules at this point, so I don't want to waste much time repeating them. And before we officially commence, we must go over the official introductions. As always, our iPhones will stay put and their positioning will not change. From left to right, we have the new and improved iPhone SE third generation now being caught up to speed with the rest of the iPhone lineup with the implementation of the A15 Bionic chip. To the right of that is the iPhone 13 mini, a well-loved miniature sized phone that may be small but packs a mighty punch. To the right of the mini, right smack in the middle is the perfect median, the regular iPhone 13. After that, we move over to the bougier members of the iPhone family. We have the iPhone 13 Pro being featured in what's my all-time favorite iPhone color to date, Sierra Blue. And finally, all the way to the right, the big boy, the heavyweight, the iPhone 13 Pro Max in the new ultra-sleek alpine green color. Ladies and gents, let's get a round of applause for our five combatants and finally, let's throw up the tail of the tape on the screen right now so you can take a more detailed look at the technical specifications of each device. As always, feel free to pause and study the chart as the main things to look out for are physical battery size, chipset, and screen size. Now with the official introductions out of the way, boys and girls, it's time! Here we go, round number one. As is customary, we want the iPhones to not go full send right away. In a similar manner, one wouldn't go to the gym and immediately try to max out on bench. Relax, bro. Gotta always stretch and warm up before the heavy load. And so, coincidentally, round number one is a simple standby test in which all five iPhones stand idle with the display on chillin' on the home screen. This is a good time to mention that the battery health on all five iPhones is exceptional, with all five having 100% maximum capacity, meaning that battery degradation will not be a factor here. So after 60 minutes, and after all five of these guys finished stretching and went for a light warm-up jog, we arrive at the following percentages. The iPhone SE with its updated chip is showing lots of promise as it only drops down to 94%. However, the rest of these iPhones all have their game faces on and do not want to show any signs of weakness. The 13 mini fares better than the SE, dropping to 96%, while the regular 13 drops only a single point, down to 99%. Incredibly, the 13 Pro made sure not to skip a single day of steroid use as miraculously it stands at 100% battery. Whoa. And last but not least, 
the iPhone 13 Pro Max oddly finishes in third place, despite having the largest battery sitting at 97%. The battle has only begun. Which iPhone do you think will reign supreme? Go ahead and pause the video and drop your predictions down below. All right, round number two. For this one, I wanted to mimic Bluetooth use, specifically playing music for 45 minutes on each device simultaneously using only Apple first party wireless headphones, including AirPods, AirPods Pro, and Beats Fit Pro. But rest assured, any headset that features ANC or transparency mode have been disabled to even the playing field. Also, the display was turned off during this test because I doubt many people leave their display on while listening to music. I listen to music every single day, and as I walk to class, I always have some headphones in my ears blasting some Slipknot or Bad Bunny. Yes, my music taste is very diverse. So anyway, after 45 minutes of continuous audio streaming on Apple Music, the iPhone SE yet again proves to be a formidable option, as it now stands at 90%. The 13 mini, lagging not too far behind, now sitting at a comfy 93%, while the mini's older brother, the regular 13, at a more respectable 96%, thanks due in part to its larger battery. The iPhone 13 Pro, though, not only is it flexing its guns here, but it's evident it also took its vitamins this morning, as if by some fluke of nature, it still stands at 100% battery, folks. That's almost two hours in and still at 100% battery. Man, oh man, at this precise moment in the test, I knew I had better head to Duncan and re-up on some caramel macchiatos as this was going to be a long night of testing. Lastly, the iPhone 13 Pro Max still rests in third place, coming in at a fairly impressive 95%. Only two tests have been completed, but we have a lot more to go as we head into... Round number three. This test is designed to truly test the endurance of each device by mimicking real world usage of our favorite streaming platforms. So as usual, I headed over to Netflix and started playing one of my favorite movies of all time, The Green Mile, a movie that is capable of making grown men cry. While it was playing, I seized the opportunity to hit the gym and afterwards picked up some chicken wings from Wingstop, which later proved to be a fatal mistake and I should have known better as to not mix chicken wings and coffee, but boy, it was as if an atomic bomb was detonated in my bathroom or something. Definitely not the move, trust. So anyway, thankfully, your boy made a full recovery with the help of some Pepto-Bismol, and after nearly 210 minutes of continuous streaming, or for you math haters, that's three and a half hours by the way, we arrived at the following percentages. All five iPhones got pretty worn out after this one, as was expected. Starting in reverse order, we see the iPhone 13 Pro Max, our heavyweight, managed to throw some haymakers and timed its shots to be the most effective as somehow it squeaks by to first place, coming in at 78%. Pretty remarkable after nearly six hours into testing. Then to the left of our heavyweight, our light heavyweight, the 13 Pro now succumbs to second place, coming in at a little under three-fourths capacity at 74%. The regular iPhone 13, showing similar performance to its older brother, is just slightly behind, coming in at 72%. Our Mini, seemingly having Mini Cardio as well, falls a little short, pun intended, this round and is now at 63%. Still pretty respectable, but to my surprise, the SE got dropped this round, but managed to get back before the 10 count as it struggled to score something impressive for the judges this round, dropping officially under half capacity, now at 49%. So, how is your pick holding up thus far? We waste no time as now we head into round number four, the social media test. Now, let's be honest here. How many minutes, or wait, scratch that, how many hours would you say the typical iPhone user spends on social media? I try to stay as much away from it as possible, but as a public figure in the tech YouTube realm, it can be a bit hard at times. But I finally caved in and I'm starting to use TikTok a little more. I wasn't the biggest fan before, and no, I did not think I had a PhD in maturity or whatever. I just wasn't my cup of tea. But anyway, this test had me actively monitoring the iPhones as I wanted to accurately depict real world usage on social media. So I scrolled through a ton of TikToks and probably threw my algos off as when I hopped back on TikTok after testing, all I saw was TikToks about cheese. Like, bro, what the hell? After about 45 minutes on TikTok, I then headed over to my social media of choice, 
Twitter, and scroll through my For You page to get the latest scoop on all the recent news and open a few articles and videos here and there right off the timeline. After a total time of 90 minutes on social media, the iPhone SE 3rd gen continues to deteriorate, now showing signs of it throwing in the towel soon, as it now sits at an alarming 26%, despite it also having the smallest display of the bunch. The iPhone 13 mini now falls short, under half capacity, officially at 47%. After test number 4 and nearly 8 hours into our testing, the regular iPhone 13 and 13 Pro both pair their gains, or losses, however you look at it, as both come in tied for second place at 60%. The rivalry between these two siblings is intense, which will come out on top. The 13 Pro Max continues its impressive pace and is starting to demand respect from its peers, who is now sitting at a very healthy 69%. Things are starting to get heated, but we are only halfway into this drain test. Let's now take a slight pause and remind those watching that if you're finding this video entertaining and or informative, at the very least, consider dropping a like on this video as countless hours of meticulous work go into bringing these drain tests for you guys. I have received plenty of DMs of appreciation from you all, as it seems these videos help out some determine which device is right for them. And if you really dig my content, consider subscribing as I love reviewing all things tech and is the only way to ensure you don't miss out on any of my future tech videos and giveaways. Now that we have the shameless sub up plug out of the way, let's prepare for round number five. Round number five is our obligatory camera test because let's be honest, most of us use our cameras almost daily on our iPhones in some way, shape, or form, whether that's directly off the iPhone's default camera app or through other applications such as Snapchat or TikTok. Photography on iPhones has surpassed my expectations, and I would even argue that for the average user, digital photography has now changed the entire game, where older DSLRs are starting to seem a bit archaic when compared to the marvelous photography and videography the iPhone is capable of. On the iPad test, we tested this exact test for 30 minutes, but since I suspect more users will use their camera more on their iPhones versus the iPads, I decided to crank up the intensity during this test and had them record my wall for a total runtime of 45 minutes, and afterwards, these were the results. The iPhone 13 Pro Max did suffer a big blow, as well did all the other iPhones, as the iPhone 13 Pro Max drops a whole 14 points down to 55%. The iPhone 13 Pro drops 23 points down to a more reasonable 37%. The regular 13 surpassed all my expectations and somehow comes out swinging, snagging second place for now, dropping only 16 points down to 44% whereas the Mini and SE are suffering quite a bit, as the 13 Mini now sits at under a quarter capacity, officially at 24%, and the new kit on the block, the newly released SE 3rd generation, holding on for dear life, as it is now sucking for air, coming in officially at a measly 3%. With a 52% disparity from first place and last place, it should be evident that there are drastic differences in battery life between the freshest lineup of iPhones that all should be made aware of. Very well, we are now heading into the championship rounds. It's now or never. The iPhone SE 3rd gen is running out of time and it'd be a miracle for it to make something happen as its underdog Vegas odds are starting to look more and more unlikely. Round number six is a test I see absolutely no other YouTuber perform. And it's so wild to me, cause come on people, let's take a look at the name of these devices. iPhone, phone. As in, we forget a lot of the time that these smart devices are phones. Therefore, a phone call test should be obligatory in any iPhone battery drain test, so I did just that. Once again, a lot of care was taken to ensure no one iPhone has an uneven advantage. So starting with my iPhone 13 Pro Max in Alpine Green, I removed my SIM card from my main device and inserted it onto each phone and rang myself using a third-party texting app, which is why I'm not covering up the phone number, as it's a disposable number that I'll never use again. So feel free to blow up my text-free line if the number isn't deleted by the time you're viewing this video. Sadly, our underdog was unable to see the light of day and didn't see it through this round as it sadly taps out at just 8 hours and 23 minutes. Moment of silence for our fallen brethren. 
All right, that's enough. The show continues. So again, each phone had the SIM card inserted and each one took a 10 minute phone call. And after this test, let's look at how each iPhone fared. As we mentioned, the SE went lights out and powered off, and it seems the same energy is starting to manifest itself in the Mighty Mini, as it is now officially in the red, sitting at 18%. The regular 13 is starting to lose some ground to its older brother, as it now stands at 35%, whereas the 13 Pro is hot on its trail, coming in at 32%. It's a back and forth between these two, it's incredibly close. And once again, in first place, not even flinching, the mighty 13 Pro Max is still extremely capable of going many more rounds as it still has a little over half capacity coming in at 51%. How's that for almost nine hours of continuous use? Second to last round, this is getting intense. Ladies and gentlemen, I feel this round will set the tone for our last and final round. For this one, we crank up good old Temple Run 2 because again, it's not the most graphically intensive game out there, but it isn't the simplest with plenty of action happening on screen and the cherry on top is that it's AFKable, which gave me a chance to brew another cup of coffee, but this time without the scorching chicken wings. Trust me, I learned my lesson. We had Temple Run continuously loop for an hour to replicate some casual mobile gaming on the iPhones, but unfortunately, we have another iPhone down. The iPhone 13 mini just couldn't take the heat anymore and decided it was time for it to call it quits, officially shutting down at 9 hours and 25 minutes, a respectable amount of time given its miniature sizing. The rest of the iPhones are starting to look a little rusty as, as they are all taking a little longer to get off the bench with the regular 13 coming out extremely gassed out after this round, now at the danger zone. The dreaded 10% battery left notification being shown, whereas its older brother isn't going to settle for any less and comes out victorious this round, now sitting at a better 19%. And as was expected, the 13 Pro Max is showing no signs of slowing down and is now at a third battery capacity, officially coming in at 33%. And now, ladies and gentlemen, with two iPhones down, I think we already know which iPhone is likely to win. I think the better question is, who will snag the silver and who is taking home the bronze? As is customary, we head over to YouTube and play the Juan and Only's infamous battery drain test playlist. A playlist you should check out after the conclusion of this video by clicking the card at the top right or by clicking the playlist link in the video description. You already know to add dramatic effect, we gotta change the lighting to our frenetic red to indicate to these iPhones that it's now or never. The 13 and 13 Pro both show tremendous heart and effort, but only one can come out on top. Which is it gonna be? Well, it was a close one, but the 13 Pro landed the decisive blow, dropping the iPhone 13 for an official TKO and having the regular 13 shut off at 11 hours and 8 minutes, showing enough effort to win it the bronze and our hearts. So, now, it's up to the pro line. I think adding unnecessary suspense is unwarranted here, as it's pretty clear which one will come out on top. The 13 Pro would need to power through a Hail Mary, but it's unlikely. Both the 13 Pro and 13 Pro Max are essentially the same phones, with the main difference, of course, being their sizing and thanks to the beefier battery found on the 13 Pro Max, it allowed the 13 Pro Max to fare better than its younger cousin, the 13 Pro, as remarkably, the Sierra Blue 13 Pro held out for much longer than I expected, as its cornermen officially threw in the towel at a very commendable 12 hours and 28 minutes, more than a full hour ahead of the regular iPhone 13. So that leaves one standing, our clear and decisive winner. In first place, ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up to the iPhone 13 Pro Max that even bested my camera's battery by a few minutes as my camera ran out of juice even before the conclusion of the test as I was knocked out already by this time since it was well into the early hours of a new day. It was almost 4 a.m before the 13 Pro Max finally decided to tap out and clocks in more than 16 hours. 16, that is absolutely insane. And goes to show that the iPhone 13 Pro Max's battery is unparalleled and is currently unmatched within Apple's iPhone lineup. And so with that, we have our rankings and our official battery drain test king for the iPhones. And just like last year's test, and still, battery drain champ for the first half of 2022. Ladies and gents, let's give it up for our winner. 
the reigning defending champ, the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Well, there you have it, guys. In the case for the iPhones, apparently, budget does not mean best battery, contrary to the iPad line, which is unfortunate as I expected slightly better performance from the SE given that it now has an even playing field in terms of chipset. But with its archaic design and smaller battery, it was to be expected but I did at least expect it to be on par with the 13 mini, but I guess not. Well guys, I am planning my first ever Apple Watch drain test in the near future, but I'm unsure as to what to test out. So if you guys want to throw me some suggestions for that video, you're welcome to drop them down below in the comment section or DM me your ideas for future videos over on any of my socials. Remember to subscribe to my channel for future tech content just like this alongside unboxings, comparisons, more drain tests, and so much more. I love you guys, stay safe, and I can't wait to catch you all in the next one.